Spring has sprung and the first of the early sown seedlings are ready for the next stage of their life. Follow me as I show you all the shortcuts I use to quickly and carefully transplant and tend them, ready for planting out into their final positions in a few weeks time. And keep watching to the end if you'd like to see me race against the clock to see just how quick it can be. Hi, I'm Ben Van Heems, editor of GrowVeg.com, and on this channel we share the best tips for growing an easy, productive vegetable garden. Now let's grab those seedlings. Okay, so first things first. This here is my greenhouse. It's a little bit rough around the edges, it's quite old now and we'll need some work doing to it in a few years time, but do you know what, it's pretty structurally sound and it'll do. Last weekend I set about thoroughly cleaning it, inside and out. Everything left the greenhouse, got sprayed or washed or wiped down and brought back in, and all of the window panes were also thoroughly cleaned inside and out as well. The result isn't perfect, but you know what? It's a lot cleaner than it was and certainly better organized. We're now all set for the growing season. Now that the greenhouse is sparkly clean, these should be too. I'm actually a big advocate of a little dirt being no bad thing. In fact, I think it's probably good for you. But when it comes to handling delicate seedlings, it's important we're not inadvertently spreading plant diseases. So clean hands are a must. You'll want to make sure that you have everything you need close to hand. This makes handling the seedlings a lot easier and hassle free. Now this is my very simple setup here. It's an old table and chair for comfort. The seeds themselves are kept inside the house to avoid the whip soaring of temperatures so it doesn't get incredibly cold and then hot. And the potting mix that we use is hauled out of the car and then dragged down here as we need it. Now to preserve the quality of the potting mix, I pop it into this little lidded container here. That keeps the potting mix nice and clean, free of weed seeds, and then when I'm done I can simply pop the lid back on. And what do I use to handle my seedlings? Well, it's not particularly exciting or technical, just a simple wooden dowel. However, quite a few people use a chopstick, which gives the same sort of effect. And quite a few people swear by a spoon. And the advantage of a spoon is that you can get up and underneath the seedling like that and then support it on the bowl of the spoon, so that's quite handy too. Sometimes, to be honest, I just use my little finger to dibble holes. Now, depending on where you live, you'll either know the process of transferring seedlings from their original nursery pot into their own pot or plug trays as transplanting or pricking out seedlings. But whatever you call it, the golden rules are the same. Get your pots or plug trays filled with your potting mix before you so much as remove the seedlings from their nursery pot. You can use a sort of flat tray like this to catch all the potting mix, which makes it a bit easier. Fill your plug trays or pots up, level it off, tap it down, and then all that extra potting mix that's caught can easily be thrown back into your tub. Use fresh potting mix and freshly drawn mains water at this more vulnerable stage. Water that's been left hanging around, for example in a water barrel outside, might have some sort of disease or bacteria in it. And at this more delicate stage, we want to make sure our seedlings are getting the cleanest start possible. You can, of course, use rainwater once the seedlings have settled in and are growing away strongly. And finally, handle your seedlings with the utmost care. Handle them by the leaves and not the delicate stem, which can easily snap or fracture, and you may not even notice it until it's withered away a couple of hours later. Okay, so let's get on and transplant these seedlings. 
Now, if you're just doing a small batch of seedlings, you want to get your dowel or your spoon, whatever you're using, and get it underneath the roots and carefully lift out a little cluster without disturbing the rest. And then you can patch up the hole that's left with more potting mix. If you're transplanting the whole pot or tray, then you can carefully jiggle them out, taking care that the potting mix doesn't land on the seedlings and squash them, sort of shake them out from the side. It's important, if you can, to keep as much of the original potting mix around the roots as possible. This just makes the transition that little bit easier. Once you've got them out of the pot or tray, carefully separate the seedlings apart, and this is important, careful is the word. Handle them by their leaves, as I've said, and gently tease them apart. And that's one lettuce plant there, and you can see that it's got a really good root system already. Once your seedlings are all separated, you can begin. So I've already filled out these trays, handle them by the leaves, and then use your dowel or other implement to make a hole, and then simply lower the plant in. Feed in the roots, and gently firm it in. Now sometimes seedlings can be a bit leggy, either because they got a bit overcrowded or because of poor light levels. In that case, just set them ever so slightly deeper to help support them. Now there's one plant that positively thrives when you plant it deep, and that's the tomato, because it grows roots along the length of its stem when it comes into contact with the soil. Plant them a bit deeper and you'll get more roots and a sturdier, more resilient plant. Once you've transplanted your seedlings, give them a water. And for this, I just use a watering can fitted with the rose. Yes, the seedlings get a bit squashed and battered and stuck to the potting mix, but they'll soon spring up and they'll have fully recovered within a couple of days. And so to the time challenge. Speed is of the essence, so long as you're careful, of course. And that's the reasoning behind this time challenge. I've got my seedlings all prepared and ready to go. I've got my trays filled with potting mix and I'm going to give myself one minute. So after one minute, I managed a rather disappointing, it has to be said, eight seedlings. I expected to get at least 12. I'm sure you can probably do better. Why not take up the transplant challenge yourself and see how many seedlings you can transplant in one minute? Post your scores in the comments section below. I'd be very interested to know. Thanks so much for watching. It's a pleasure to have your company and do check out our other videos on seed sowing and handling seedlings. I'll catch you next time.